Dragon's Rising Season 2 Part 2 was really good and the sets weren't. Now don't get me wrong, the sets are actually still really good. So for example, the Source Dragon Emotion, which is so massive it can barely fit in my doorway. Not to mention its outstanding design and aesthetic. However, this thing appeared in the show for like 2, maybe 3 minutes? And I don't ever remember Roz getting on a throne and trying to enslave a freaking source dragon. And actually, there's good reason for this. Designer Lee Chi Wing actually stated that they model and create the sets before they make the show, meaning that most sets will not follow the show because they were put in production in a year prior. Now, there definitely are exceptions where like models like this are actually put into the show afterward, but otherwise, this is the main reason for why we haven't seen figures like Bonzel and Frack, or sets that we should have gotten like the Monastery of Gates. So I've decided to take into to my own hands to build up our dream ninjago wave and i actually want to ask you guys for a favor on every one of the sets you happen to see give me some feedback as well as give a rating out of 10 on what you think about the set i'd love to hear what you guys have to say in the comments below let's get to it all the way back in january 2024 we got three rising dragon strike sets this consisted of Kai's Rising Dragon Strike, Nia's Rising Dragon Strike, and Aaron's Rising Dragon Strike, which is actually a little bit weird. Kai and Nia were both able to do Rising Dragon Strike successfully, whereas Aaron didn't. In fact, he got demoted from not even being able to do basic spinjitsu. So, I wanted to make some Rising Dragon Strike sets for the ninja that were actually able to pull it off. Starting off with Lloyd's Rising Dragon Strike, this set comes with a Lloyd in his Rising Dragon Strike uniform, which is just an edit of the mech suit along with a temple guard. This rising dragon strike is complemented by a ton of green and features a green dragon energy core as its eye. For the minifigure selection, I actually chose a temple guard instead of a wolf mask warrior because we need more temple guards. As characters super prominent to the show, we shouldn't only have one in the tournament temple city that's exclusive. Next up is Cole's rising dragon strike, which actually never happened in the show, but we have an Aaron one, so why not have a Cole? Cole's Rising Dragon Strike mainly features a black color scheme, but I added in some orange so it has some more contrast because all black doesn't look that great. And then we also have Cole in his mech suit that is specialized for Rising Dragon. And then our other minifigure happens to be a Wolf Mask Warrior instead of a Temple Guard, a Wolf Mask Warrior with those like Shatter Spin arms so that way it actually has a chance against a full on Rising Dragon Strike. Oh, and make sure to hit that subscribe button because if you don't, Brickside Periator Man will come and break all your LEGO sets. But actually, we're trying to get to 10k, so make sure to hit that subscribe button. And our last Rising Dragon Strike for this wave happens to be Zane's Rising Dragon Strike with a Wolf Mask Warrior. This Rising Dragon Strike is completely coated in white just to match Zane's color scheme, and it has no blue or any other color. And then we also get a Wolf Mask Warrior along with the Mech Pilot Zane minifigure the wolf mask warrior again to defend a rising dragon strike and a mech pilot zane to match the other rising dragon strike sets now if you've been a ninjago fan for the past five years or so you might remember the gamers market set and the tournament of elements set these sets were $30 and they came with a ton of figures, which is really good for that price tag. Leo hasn't done anything like this since, and I thought we should actually get one because there's so many figures that we could use dupes of. So here is the full set, and since there is so much, I'm going to break it down, but before we get to that, I'm going to start with the minifigures. Our first minifigure is an undead greenbone warrior known as the Elemental Master Figment. Now, he was never given a name in the show, but he's still a really cool character. Pretty much, he can make clones of himself. For this set wave, I decided to actually use the these tournament track suits for every single one of my figures because I really doubt LEGO would ever make a full minifigure for each one of the new elemental masters. Next up are two temple guards as well as one wolf mask minifigures, just spam characters I think everyone should be able to get more of. I chose Aaron because of his detective work and that has to do with the city, and plus he should not be exclusive to a $150 and a $250 set. Master Lloyd because of his prominence in Season 2 and Zane cause why not. And then we also have Obscuria, the new Elemental Master of Shade, who was in the first two episodes of Part 2. And you probably also noticed Rack. <sighs> now as for the breakdown of the actual set, we have a Wolf Mask Warrior fighting Aaron Lloyd over the Tournament of Sorcerer's Cup or the Trophy, whatever you want to call it. I personally don't think such an important plot point should be exclusive to a $250 LEGO set. But also in the actual show, Roby did say he wanted And this'll house the element cup. Imagine lights hitting the glorious sheen of its dragon ivory. So this is supposed to be like a version of that stool. And plus the cup looks kinda cool anyway. Next up is the portal gate build. Now you might be wondering, why did I build a portal gate? And this is actually because at the monastery of the gate, there's a ton of portal gates, so this still fits in with the theme. 
and I also wanted to make something important to the show that was in a cheaper set. Moving on to the food stand, which is just a food stand with a ton of different foods, this is just really to add to the ambience of Tournament Temple City. Along with that, we have two temple guards on one of those things that Roby is constantly flying around, and the thing that was actually used in the fight between Sora and Frack. And then along with those two guards, we also have Obscuria and a bookshelf with some weapons. The weapons are just something that should be in a tournament temple city. And the bookshelf is a place where Aaron can actually study and learn more about temple city for his detective work. And we just have Obscuria going over and looking at some of the books. And so here is the 360 degree view of the set. It comes with a total of 9 figures, a little over 300 parts. And it would likely retail for around $30 just due to like the figure in the price and guys make sure to go ahead and go down in the comments and actually rate this out of 10 as well as the other set that you soon see because i really want to get some good feedback on this and also as for the rising dragon strike sets i did want to confirm those will be priced at 10 dollars each just like the prior rising dragon strike sets as these are just complete gimmick sets and they're only meant to you know be like little gimmick sets that you can play with for 10 bucks if you like to do stop motion animation or like to voice act, we have the perfect Discord server for you. Not only does everyone give each other a bunch of animation tips and mecha bricks tips, we also post these cool collabs that you might have seen. So make sure to hit that link in the description to join our community. Now so far for the Dragons Rising Season 2 tournament sets, we've gone the Tournament Battle Arena as well as Tournament Temple City. But this next set is going to revolutionize the Tournament Training Ground set with easily one of my most favorite LEGO sets that I've ever made. The tournament battlefield and here is my lego set now it must be very overwhelming to look at but here i am to break it down for you starting off with the minifigure selection we're going to first look at cinder who i tried to do my best to make accurate to the show he actually has legs unlike the actual sets which is give him this ghost tail thingy and then he also has that collar that he usually has in the show and I want to say I did not make these legs, these were actually made by my friend Flo, who has an awesome Instagram account that you can check out in the description below. Moving on to the Noct minifigure, which has actually been in previous sets, like Noct is the actual goat, we need the rest of the Forbidden 5, and I promise I'll be working on those for the next video, but this minifigure specifically, my friend Nimomo made. Another awesome account to check out in the description below. Next up, we have the Merlopian, who is the current Elemental Master of Sound, taking up the role after Jacob. Moving on to my next minifigure, Shatter Spin Form J. This is just meant to be accurate to the show, and it is honestly one of my favorite characters that I have actually molded and made a minifigure for. He sports these custom printed red mad eyes on both faces. Next up, we have three more elemental blasters that don't have a name or an elemental power, or just have been in previous LEGO sets that I have made. And then we also have Nia and Sora to match Noct, Jay, and Cinder in these fights on the battlefield. And now it's time to break down what is going on in this set. Starting off to the side here, you can actually see the Sora versus Cinder battle taking place. I used some elements from the actual battle, like this like sort of log in the middle and then we also do have some fire spinning out with a bar to hang on next up our merlopian friend is actually heading to the weapons area which is a reference to the zeatrix versus lloyd fight where there were a ton of weapons so you can come here and pick up some weapons to fight in the arena Next up here, we have a J and a Nia minifigure doing a 1v1 against each other. We have Nia going up a ramp, which is actually a reference to the Nia versus Noct battle. And the big red thing that J is currently like flying over is the thing that Lloyd and Zeatrix were fighting on in their battle. Also, on some of these renders, you can see a black floor. That's an actual Lego piece. There was just some rendering issues, and this is the exact Lego piece. It's quite a big Lego piece. But just letting y'all know that that was what you're seeing here. I just had some rendering issues. And while we're on the topic of things I probably should tell you guys, these are both sides of the J face. Next up is the more mechanical part where you can actually turn this little gear and it will turn everything and make it move. So I went ahead and built this in real life so I can properly show you how all of this works. So first let's grab some elemental masters. Here we have Beatrix, we're going to call it Beatrix. We have the elemental master of wind, Euphrasia, Noct, as well as Tox. And pretty much the way this works is you turn this little thing and everything moves. You can see that Beatrix moves in a straightforward fashion. She goes back and forth and then Euphrasia just moves around in circles. Now as for Noct and Tox here, they also move around in circles. And this is like sort of like a fight thing where like both places fight so using like weapons and stuff you can like pretend like they're hitting each other so this is just supposed to be like a more accessible battlefield 
And there are also other spots to keep minifigures on this thing. Here we have knock on one of those fire spitting things. It's like one of those things. And then we have some elemental masters that aren't currently participating sitting on the bleachers in the back. So to total all this up, this set has about 500 pieces, a little bit over, and it costs around $70. I'm making this estimate because there are a ton of big pieces used in the set, and there are also a ton of minifigures, especially exclusive ones in like new molds and prints. And guys, remember to make sure to break this set out of 10 in the comments below. Like, I need your feedback. Now this next set is not necessarily like the best set I ever made, but it is going to be the biggest set of this video and the biggest set I've ever made. This next Lego set being the Dojo Battle Lego set. Now like old sets, let's start off with the minifigures. In Dragon's Rising Season 2 Part 2, Master Lloyd was a very prominent minifigure, especially at the Dojo, so he was a perfect fit for this Lego set. Next up is Kai, who even though is uncanny, I thought would be a perfect fit for a Lego set with the dojo because we need to put in some ninja in here. Next up, we have the Cole and Zane minifigures decked out in their tournament robe and tournament gear. And then over here, we have your average Temple Guard minifigure. Here we have another Temple Guard, but we also have an accurate Lord Raza Dragons Rising Season 2 Part 2 all decked out in pink instead of red like the set. The only new print on this minifigure that I made was the pink Roz torso, but everything else is from the other Lord Roz minifigures. Moving on, we got the same Cinder minifigure from the last set, and then along with that Cinder minifigure, we actually have one of those night pink guards or purple guards that barge into the ninja's dojo and try to kill them. And then lastly, we have another one of those purple guard minifigures. Moving on to the actual set, if you go ahead and take off the top floor, you can actually open up the bottom floor with the hinges built in. Here we have a tea place for Master Lloyd as well as some katanas. Here we have Zane chilling with some deadly obstacles as well as fighting dummies and a place to hold a sword. Kai is standing next to this like little thing with two shurikens and two swords on it. That being a thing that I made inspired off the original dojo temple from Core. Here we have this sliding door in action, so you can actually slide the doors to the side to let the ninja in. And here on the left we have a sleeping bag, and on the right we have a training dummy so you can like, you know, fight with it. And here's a better look at some of the fighting thingies that you can train with. Along with that we have a full view of everything down there on the bottom floor. Next up and moving up to the top floor. We have a very open area for the ninjas to chill, it's a place that wasn't really explored in the show so it's just really open there, I left it open there. And yeah, that is pretty much it for the set. And here's a look at some of the other set promo art on this LEGO set, and this is just the like full image of everything, so you can see the set as a whole and all put together. And yeah, that is pretty much it for this LEGO set. Here is another look at the minifigures. You can see some of the exclusives we have going up on here. But yeah, no, that is really it for the set. It would retail for around $90 at about a little over a thousand pieces with about two exclusive minifigures. If you haven't already done it yet, please give me some feedback on the set to rate them out of 10. Just Anything would really help because I'm trying to learn how to make better models and better designs and better product. And also, there is going to be another part to this video where we do the monastery gates, but if you have any ideas for sets, please go ahead and put those down in the comments below. It could be in the next set video. And yeah, I'm so happy we're finally done with this video. It was a lot of work. Bye.